Hi everyone, and welcome to the Practice Growth with Praz podcast. I'm your host, Praz Murthy, CFO and co-founder at Dr. Multimedia, where for the last 10 years I've been helping practices grow all across the country. We started this podcast so we could dive deeper into the issues around practice growth, from online marketing to the way you run your business. We know doctors are busy people and you don't have a lot of time to study these kinds of topics, so we're hoping this audio podcast makes it really easy to stay up to date with what's going around the country. We'll be interviewing top doctors, successful practice managers, and other experts in the field. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's jump into some of the most common online marketing mistakes that we see all the time. The first is not collecting email addresses. Uh, And I guess by extension, we'd probably even be talking about cell phone numbers these days. But I can tell you the number of practices that we run into in the patient paperwork or the onboarding process where they don't collect the email address and the cell phone number of the patient. I think the cell phone numbers are more common now just because that's how people prefer to be called and a lot of people don't even have home numbers. But email addresses, we see so many blanks, we see so many optionals uh, that don't make it a priority. And the reason it's so important is much in the same way that many of you came across this video in an email that we sent you, it's a, it's a means for engagement. Is it the same powerful tool that it was three or four years ago? No, it's definitely dropped in engagement as spam has increased and we've turned to other forms of entertainment and communication, but there's still so much power in it. And if you don't have the email, you likely don't have a way to connect with your patients outside of your operating hours or when they're in at your practice. So email is gonna be the first link to that and making it mandatory, stressing to your staff that that is a required field, that we're going to need that. Uh, It's not like it was five years ago. If you've tried this before and you had mediocre success, people were a lot more protective of their emails back then now much less so you need an email to do almost anything online whether it's start a facebook page or join linkedin it's just a requirement that in order to interact online our doctors and our practices need to acquire emails because that is the key to being able to reach large amounts of patients for relatively low cost and staying engaged with them and most importantly directly linking them to where you want to go after all it's likely how you're watching this video The next big mistake that we see is focusing only on text content, whether that's on your website, your social media, uh, your newsletters that you're putting out. If you're only writing text, you're gonna run into problems and you're gonna get less engagement. Some of that, unfortunately, is cultural. You know, people are reading less probably than ever before, at least as a society. When we see something that's too long, we often skip it, tune out, tell ourselves we'll come back later. We need some form of visual engagement or even ideally video. Just imagine if everything we've done so far in this short video up to this point was written and you had to read your way through it, or if you just could click the play button and listen to me say it. Two totally different ways of interacting with content. So not the text isn't important. You still absolutely need a valuable text and copy on your website and in your social media posts and your email newsletters. But you can't just rely on that anymore. So your website needs to have visuals, pictures, video, your social media posts should, the text should be accompanied by you know a picture or a video or some other visual. When you're doing the email newsletters, make sure you have interactive buttons or videos, again, like the one that you likely clicked on, so that you're engaging people with more than just text. Then if they're interested in what you're talking about, they will often dive deeper and read their way through the entire text. But when you're talking about just having a couple seconds to grab their intention, you're gonna much more easily do it with a catchy headline, graphic, video than you would with text only. So we see people focusing way too much on what they're writing and not nearly enough on what media is going to accompany the pieces that they're writing. The third mistake that we see all the time, and I talked about this in a recent episode, is only using a few channels online. So these days marketing is moving to what we call multi-channel marketing because there are so many ways to reach people. So your website. Uh, social media, meaning your Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, if you do that. You could also talk about you know, the email marketing that you're putting out there. It really, anything that you're creating that can draw people to the website. If you're doing creatives for local marketing that you're doing, right? All the different channels. And too often, especially our medical practices, who are just by definition a couple years behind the latest trends. It's just how it goes. Nothing to feel bad about. 
But as you guys catch up, and what you're doing, you're going to see that you've been putting a lot of attention into a couple of channels. What you want to be doing is putting some attention into all the channels right now to help build this up. You know, I, when I'm scrolling through LinkedIn, I can tell which of my clients are the most progressive because without our help, a lot of them are starting to post content on LinkedIn. Just last night, I was watching a chiropractor do a short video demonstration on you know, pinching a muscle and releasing it and explaining that it's a technique that you can use all over your body. I thought, wow, they're delivering free video content through LinkedIn, which is not at all probably where all of their clientele or patients are right now, but they understand that multiple channels is the way to engagement and they're starting to put out their same content everywhere. And that's really what we want you to be doing is taking that multi-channel approach and realizing that it needs to go out in every platform that you can and not just limit yourself to a few. Yes, you want to do the channels you do well, but you also want to start getting involved on those other channels with LinkedIn being the biggest one that I'm starting to see doctors post you know, medical content on there and really draw in some engagement. Now, one of the reasons that's so important is that the other channels is often where engagement is the easiest, right? Not that many people are doing videos on LinkedIn when I scroll through. So if I see one of my clients doing a video, I stop and check it out. Meanwhile, on Facebook, everybody might be doing you know, a picture or a post on that specific day. So one of the benefits of using the lesser known channels or the less active channels now is that it's easier to get engagement and you get a head start. And by the time it becomes you know, widely used, you already have a strong base. But you know, if you think about push notifications and text messages, on top of all the things we just messaged, there's all these inbound communications that we're getting, and the more that you can be on, the better. So it's not like you can just stop doing email marketing, but you might have less effectiveness there, and as a result, need to add on these other channels. The next mistake that we see all the time, actually uh, was pretty novel when I first heard it, or really thought about it. We knew it was going on, but we didn't really verbalize it as a mistake which is not updating old content. You know, even if you've been watching our videos, you know that I'm preaching content creation and engagement, reaching your patients, reaching your possible clients, uh, being there, as, being an expert to draw people in when they're interested or when they need you. We're all about that, right? We do believe in the value of content. But what you don't want to do is get so wrapped up in new that you forget to update old. And if you watched another talk where we talked about the value of looking at Google Analytics and Google Search Console to understand what's drawing you traffic, think about if you put out, let's say you did an amazing job of content. Th one month, 30 new pieces of content, and all right, you're, getting down, you're sitting down and figuring out what to do the next month. Well, you could just try to create 30 more pieces, or you could look back at the ones that you created and look at what worked, what got the most engagement, and then double down and update those pieces of content or dive deeper and expand those pages on your website. So by that I mean, think about something really simple like your services page. Okay, you built a website, you probably put together two or three paragraphs at the time, you put it up. Now since then your focus may have been new pages on the website, but what about revisiting the services pages that you had and adding a little more each month. You know, those pages are already getting your views. If you're using Google Analytics, you can you should hopefully be able to answer my question, which page on your website gets the most traffic? Which page gets the second most traffic, the third most traffic? Look at those pages and keep making them better. Because if they're already getting traffic, that means you've got search, you know, history and search traffic coming your way, so you're building up some value. So if people are finding your website that way, make what they're finding better. You know, I, I heard recently that Wikipedia is a great example. When you go to Wikipedia, you don't find 40 pages on the same topic. You find one page and the content just keeps improving over time and keeps getting longer and more robust so that every time someone stumbles upon it, it's that much more useful. Obviously, your website's not Wikipedia, but the lesson there is to focus on constantly updating your content and making it better. And if you do write a blog post that is off the charts, that gets the most traffic of the month, don't just let it you know, fade away, update it the next month, add to it, make it better, and it'll keep getting that traffic and you can repurpose it and make it new. So a lot of times our doctors and office managers get lost in this idea of new content, they forget to update their old content. 
And lastly, you know, kind of a related mistake that we see is not staying focused. Again, uh, because there's so many channels and there's so much content, and if you take everything I'm telling you to do at face value, it seems like an endless pile of work. And while it's true that it never ends needing to do it, it doesn't have to be as scattered as you may think. You can have a coherent strategy. You can really limit the amount of work you do. You can really repurpose a lot of what you're doing, but stay focused. Really think about the value you're delivering people. You're a medical practice. What value, what information, what content can you give to people? As a, do they really want to come to you, you know, to watch whatever the latest internet trend is or to get your advice on something unrelated? No. Well, why they're coming to you or why they're winding up on your website is your profession. In order to be a doctor, you go to lots of school. You go to more school than any else, anyone else. And the point of that is that you come kind of ready-made as an expert. When, we, when people walk into the doctor's office, hopefully, they don't argue with you, right, like they would at a different service provider. They don't tell you their opinion and ask you to do it your way. We defer to you guys for your medical expertise because you've earned it, not just with your education, but then with your experience. So if you're the medical experts, what your clients and patients are going to want from you is medical information, medical advice, medical tips, medical tricks, and that can vary, right? Those can be woven into almost every aspect of daily life, our health, our wellness, our diet, um, where we go, how we go there, you know, how we see. All of those things are related to medicine and can be tied in in a really savvy medical content creator is going to take everyday topics and explain them in a medical way or provide medical advice or medical guidance about that topic. That's how you can keep the, you know, the seeming topic varied all the time, but stay laser focused on what value you're bringing people. And that really helps you kind of narrow down content, know what you should be writing about, know what's not going to be useful. And don't take my word for it. Look at your analytics and see what's performing and then double down on that and understand, okay, this is what people are attracted to. This is what they're not. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Practice Growth with Praz. I'm your host, Praz Murthy, and if you have any questions or comments, please visit us at drmultimedia.com. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're constantly sharing new content as part of our mission to take online marketing topics and make them relevant to your practice. And if you like what you heard, please tell a friend and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Thanks so much for listening and we can't wait to do it again.